thank you for joining us for Season 5, Episode 10 of Adventures in Fly Tying. And now here's your host, Joe Cornwall. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Fly Tying. I'm your host, Joe Cornwall. We have a pretty interesting fly for you today. If you've been following this episode for the last 50 or so flies that we've tied, you know that we like to tie fishing flies, we like simple flies, we like things that we can hang up in trees because, let's face it, I'm not lefty carrier because my casts end up oftentimes in places other than the water. But I want flies that attract fish. Jack Gartside was probably one of the most creative fly tires of our time. Certainly a guy who really had a lot to say about how to get unique actions out of unusual materials on a fly. Let's take a look at one of his signature patterns. I'm a big Jack Gartside fan. One of his signature patterns called the soft hackle streamer. Let's take a look. Here's the soft hackle streamer. You're going to see that it has a beautiful minnow shaped body. Tremendous amount of action in this fly. It really is best when fished down and across or in still waters with a retrieve because there's not a lot to it. This is all marabou and it really tends to wet down and displace a lot of water. There's a lot of space. Very minimal amount of flash and very minimal amount of materials. Let's take a look at what we need to tie this fly. First, I kind of like to use an, uh, a, an unusual hook. In this case, I'm using a Mustad Ultra Point. You can use a mosquito hook. Um, there's a number of these short shanked hooks uh, that are out there. In this case, this is the model 60500 BLN, which is black nickel in size 4. So this is an extra heavy wire, which will help to sink the fly. It's also going to be great, especially if you're fishing for something like steelhead. It'll definitely be a strong enough hook. And it positions that super short sharp point right up at the head of the fly where a fish is going to take it. The other materials that we're going to use in this fly are going to be marabou. And you want to use marabou blood quills. In this case we're using white and chartreuse, but you can tie this in pure white, pure black, pure chartreuse, yellow, red, mickey fin. Just let your imagination go wild. It's a wonderful style of tying. Um, the other thing I like to do is I like to match the fly um, with a, a, a complementary thread color. In this case I'm using a chartreuse uh, waxed 140 denier tying thread. So let's get started on this fly. Just a really wonderful pattern to tie. Start by setting your hook up in the vise. Once again, this is a very short shank size 4 with a great point on it. These new Mustad hooks have just awesome points. Start your thread right behind the eye and wrap a neat thread base to a point right at the end of the shank. You don't have a lot of space and there's not a lot of materials that are going in this. This is really what's lovely about this pattern is this is a, a three minute or okay maybe a ten minute tie. Okay now we want to add a little bit of flash just a little bit and we want that flash to be in the center of the fly. So I'm going to take just about three strands here, uh, certainly no more than that, of silver or chartreuse or whatever color you want of crystal flash, fold them over the thread start tying them in and lay them along the back of that. There you go. Your flash is in place. You can leave that that length. You don't have to trim that. That's the extent of the flash. You don't want to do any more than that. Now in this case, uh, on the particular fly that we're tying, we're tying this chartreuse over white. Let's prepare the white marabou blood quill. Marabou blood quill has a very thin stem. And you can see that right down here it starts to thicken appreciably. That portion can't be used, so what we do is we strip that away. Now, the rest of this is what can be used. Take that marabou blood quill, lay it down flat on top of the hook, shiny side up, if there is such a thing as a shiny side on marabou. Go ahead and clip off that excess quill. And I'm going to take my thread to about the halfway point of that short shank. Now, lift up on this blood quill, holding it with your right hand if you're right-handed. Wet your fingers a little bit. Stroke those hackle barbs towards you, all to the left. Now, start wrapping. You can use a little clip. That'll sometimes make it a lot easier because these hackle stems are pretty um, delicate. You want to wrap two, three, whoop. They are delicate and they're also slippery. Maybe three wraps of that marabou. 
Certainly no more than that. It's surprising how little material you need. And don't worry about this fly. We're going to show you how to get this thing to just lay perfectly when we're done here. Surprising how little material you need to make this fly really work. Now I'm going to clip off the rest of that excess marabou that I don't need there. Now the next step is to add the chartreuse marabou that I want. Same thing, marabou blood quill. Come down to the part where that blood quill begins to really thicken up. Strip that material away. Give myself a good tie-in point. You can see that the marabou has a little bit of a natural curve. This is the outside and the inside of the feather. Tie it in so that the natural curve is facing downward. Bind that right up to behind that hook eye. Leave your thread there. Same deal. Hold up that marabou. And you can wet your fingers a little bit and pull all of those marabou plumes to one side. And probably the hardest part about this is just getting used to handling this marabou uh, because it is such a, an awkward material. It's all over the place. And the, uh, trust me when I tell you that the first time you tie this, you're going to think, wow, this, this fly isn't looking anything like what I saw. And it's not coming out anything like a bait fish. And it really looks more like a feather duster. What am I supposed to do with this thing? Well. Hang in there, whoop, you lose the tip of the hackle, just hopefully you can grab it like I just did. Hang in there, keep on wrapping, get those in place. Now, you can see that I'm getting closer to this. Wrap a thin, neat head on the end of this fly. And I like to wrap back just a little bit over that marabou because that helps it to flow back. Throw my whip finish in there. Now, here comes one of the secret weapons for this particular fly a toothbrush. Do not use the toothbrush you want to use in the morning or you'll have feathers in your smile. Use a soft toothbrush. I buy them particularly for this. I keep a, uh, a, a firm and a soft for various flies that I tie. And you'll see that this is actually taking that knotted marabou and stroking it right back to where it's supposed to be. Now, let's go back and address that flash. You can see that as I pull back, the marabou comes back. There's the flash. I want to trim that flash maybe a half an inch beyond where that marabou ends. Now, here's the trick. Take it out of the vise, fluff it up, and there you have it. That is a spectacular fly for stripers, spectacular fly for smallmouth bass. I actually took one of my uh, all-time best smallmouth, stream smallmouth from a stream in Minnesota, a fish that uh, was definitely pushing six pounds on this fly. Very productive for everything from walleye and sawguy to largemouth to stripers. Uh, Jack Gartside, what can you say about the guy? He was an absolute genius, very creative tire. The Gartside soft hackle streamer. You need to be carrying a few of these in your kit. I recommend chartreuse in white or white, but tie up a few different colors. You're going to love this one. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Adventures in Fly Tying. Till next time, keep those lines in the water and tight lines.